This is the all-new Mercedes GLE, the newest generation of Mercedes full-size SUV built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, together with the GLS that will then also feature the new stuff that this new generation introduces right now. You can see behind me, and this is the designer Gordon Wagner and also the new Daimler CEO beginning of May 2019, Ola Kalinius. And they're also taking a look at their new vehicle. But for you, we'll exclusively cover the exterior and the interior and what we can expect from driving this very vehicle. Here we can see that the GLE is in the AMG line with the diamond pin grille. That one is my favorite. Is it also yours? Also, the AMG line features more or bigger air intakes here in the lower part and this swing spoiler grille with a contrast color. Definitely a very strong appearance, even stronger than the one before. But you can also see they rather use an evolution of design. You can also see new accentuations on the front hood. And the headlamps are also modernized with a new LED daytime running like signature, by the way, with two Cs, if you can say. And this shall also represent the E-Class, because as we might remember also from the sedan, C-Class is just one swing. The E-Class has two, like the GLE, and then the S-Class, and also then later the GLS, will have three of those LED daytime running light swings, so you can always see in which segment you are, basically, no matter if SUV or sedan. And also in the front, we have the sensors right here, hidden behind the logo, and, well, the inside is 2D, but since they put the outside ring in a normal 3D scheme, it still appears three-dimensional, also an interesting solution. And by the way, those ones here, the optional multi-beam LED, 650 meters of range in the high beam, but also depending on the country, we've recently also heard that depending on regulations in the country, for example in the US, some of those light systems are also reduced in the range. Well, I think there should be also an effort to harmonize those stuff worldwide. But I think that's always a lot of complication then with uh, each regulation. It surely looks fancy here in the highest trim. 4 meters 92 or 16 foot 1 is the total length of this new generation and that's about 10 centimeters longer so just a little bit and 8 centimeters of that went into the wheelbase so the wheelbase is a little bit longer so we can expect more interior space we will find out very soon this one here also in the contrast with the black mirror caps and the black frames in the AMG line with a night package and white exterior color. You can see at the side there's just one slight dropping line used. They are rather conservative in the design layout, just to add this sporty AMG line in this case then, but the overall layout is not too far away from the previous generation. And they also kept here in the rear this split in the C-pillar with the rear window, and then the rear window will form one glass unit with the rest of the rear of the vehicle. And I think it's very strange i mean it's a big vehicle but i think from the other suvs also the competitors recently we've shown you the bmw x5 you can check out the full review also linked in the video description this one here looks small from the outside or what do you think rims are available from 18 to 22 inch those ones are here are the biggest ones amg 22 inch rims really massive and you can see that here in the amg line also the wheel arches are painted in vehicle color however i more prefer the crossover look that you can really see it's still an suv just with the black plastic fenders which one do you prefer the rears indeed the one that has changed most and I think this looks more elegant now with those horizontally drawn tail lamps. It was a little bit sharp right here in the design. This is a GLE 450. Soon we'll tell you more about the engines and you can see we do not lose too much room on the inside here. That's very interesting. And in the lower part we got fake exhaust because they are really purely fake. There's nothing. The real exhaust is just right underneath the vehicle. So, looking at the engine right here, this is the 450, a six-cylinder with 367 horsepower output, also with a 48-volt board net, so it's a mild hybrid system with a so-called EQ boost. 5.7 seconds to 100 kilometers now, or 62 miles an hour. Then they also already announced a 350, that's a four-cylinder with 300 horsepower petrol, and there will later also be a V8 petrol, as well as a plug-in hybrid, so a real plug-in hybrid, not as the mild hybrid here is. But this one will probably be the most, you know, or the, the, the biggest seller, or maybe also because of the Chinese market, even the small petrol engine. 
and there will also be four-cylinder and six-cylinder diesels. Interesting here, by the way, with the carbon fiber, it obviously stiffens here, the front part, and still very light. Now let's get inside. See it right here. So we have the red at the inside of the doors, also the classic Mercedes electric controls for the seat, also with memory functions. Then the optional Burmester sound system for the 3D surround sound. We can also open the tailgate from right here and also the towing hook. And this really leaves some room for bigger bottles. That's really cool. So here it is in your interior. You can see a horizontal layout with those two 12.3 inch screens already from here, soon also from a rear perspective. Then the steering wheel with those new controls for the Distronic, the adaptive cruise control and also those touch buttons here for left and right thumb to control either the right or the left display. Since we have the Distronic here, the separate column here is also removed. Just have the electric steering wheel control right there and the new seats right there. This is an optional animal skin layout. Don't have so much information there yet, but I'm sure we also will be article options, so a full leatherette or also some Dynamica options if you want to go for another surface. And also different seat forms available. So let's get inside, see how that one plays out because they actually promise that the um, A pillar is actually a little bit slimmer. So they have a little bit more room in the front right there. And let's see, we move the seat a little bit to the front right there. And the interior really feels feels huge. So again here the steering column control and when I'm sitting here as with, with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 we have the panoramic roof installed. There's a little bit headroom left. If you want more headroom left, if you're taller than me, then probably you could also leave out that panoramic roof. But of course you have this high upright seating position. However this front dashboard is quite huge and due to the sporty design in the front, you can see that the visibility to the front is limited. It's the same they did with the GLC. So the GLK before was actually with a better visibility to the front. And here the same happened. So I think the visibility to the front has really decreased. That's one negative aspect about it. But it is surely cleaner in the layout. And you can already see this hole right there. This is for the head-up display, which is also available, which then projects everything in the front of you. So here you can see the interior overview. Everything is very cleanly organized. You can with the leatherette cover, uh, with the soft touch, really cool. And then there's two 12.3 inch screens. And they are indeed standard here. And it's good that they make something standard like this. Not that you have like, again, three different screen sizes or something. Here you can already see, by the way, there's a proximity sensor um, for the touchpad, for the lower touchpad, both and for the screen right here. So before you actually touch anything, something is highlighted and there's another special function we're going in depth very soon. First of all, let's continue with the interior overview here. You can also get wood trim, for example, with a, um, a matte wood trim. This one here, the sporty aluminum style. Here they do not use the round Mercedes vents. They want to be more rectangular to have a strong design also on the interior. Then the steering wheel you can see here with the thumb, you can control the right infotainment system. But it is also a touchscreen now. This one is really helpful to have multiple usages and you can also use the lower touchpad. So it's basically redundant. You can pick how you want to control the infotainment system. And that's of course then really helpful to get you know the stuff you really like. Very big map here as well. Crystal clear display like that and the smartphone connection will be available with Bluetooth, but also with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So with the left thumb then here, you can control the left screen right there. You can, for example, also change the styles. I'll put the steering wheel a little bit more inward. So for example, understated, this is a very, you know, basic, clean setup. Can we see that, Holger? From, yeah, okay, great, we can see that. Um, Go back again, or like a sporty gauge, like this. It has the sporty AMG style. And um, then you can also have, for example, navigation info just in the middle of your um, of your display right there. Um, yeah, when when the you know when the route is being picked, for example. Well, in this new steering wheel, you set the 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 gears here at the right side, 
and then let's move move in the lower part of the middle console. You have two panic handles here <laughs> with ambient light as well. Really interesting, maybe for off-road use. Then in the front here, well, this glossy black, especially on motor shows, it does collect a lot of fingerprints. You can slide it forward. Hmm, interesting opening mechanism they found here. At least metal nerd right there. Inductive charging pad for a smartphone, two USB-C devices, 12 volt power supply, and adaptive cup holders. And yes, they can again be cooled or heated. Very nice. The climate control is still manual. They also thought about a nice clicking sound, also the vent strength for, for example. So good to have it still manual that you can, for example, do it while driving in an easy way. This touchpad here, again, is another possibility. You can also zoom in and out, like with this pinch gesture. And then you can also activate the camera system from here. Other buttons right here, for example, for the suspension, since you can get different suspension, you have a standard suspension, you have an air suspension, where you can lift the car up and down, which we have here. And then there's a completely new suspension I will soon tell you more about. Finally, we can open this middle part, have USB-C support. Maybe the second one wouldn't be bad there either. Again, again, good build quality everywhere where we can see it. This new MBUX system, by the way, also features, introduced with the A-Class, a new voice control. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Set temperature to 22 degrees. Temperature is 22 degrees. Navigate to the next Mercedes dealer. No results were found. What can I do for you? Hmm. Navigate to Stade de France. Please say the destination. Paris, Stade de France. Can you say that again, please? Hmm, doesn't know that stadium. Let's say uh, Saint-Denis. You can enter a destination by saying an address, a point of interest, or the name of a contact. Additionally, you can navigate to one of your saved addresses. What is your destination? Berlin. I am starting route guidance to Platz des 18, Moors, Berlin. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. You know, it's a good system for setting the temperature and quite often it also works for the navigation. But you see, maybe not always for all destinations. Let's see where that was set now. We are in Paris, of course. Well, that takes some time to process now. It might have also to do with the GPS connection. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. So, uh, passing Cologne, and yeah, actually, the car wants to drive to Berlin, but not to the Stade de France, the stadium in, uh, here in Paris. Hmm. And for a special function, we are also joined by the product developer here of the infotainment system, Volker Entemann, because there's also a new feature which can differentiate with the camera between driver and co-driver. How does it work? Yeah, we call the system uh, Interior Assistant. And the uh, uh, interior system works with a camera which is installed in the roof of the car. And the system can distinguish between driver and co-driver operation. So um, you see here, as soon as I approach the screen, I get a highlight of the icons. And when I activate uh, Comfort, you see that my seat, the passenger seat, is now automatically uh, highlighted. And if you do the same from your perspective, then uh, you get a highlight of the uh, driver seat. So the supports in select... Maybe, maybe you, you select again that we can... Yeah. And, and we can also demonstrate that it works with a touchpad. So when I uh, have my hand close to the touchpad, um, also here it is recognized that it's me. I mean, you do the same, then it's uh, you again. So this is one key feature, this passenger versus driver distinction. And uh, even more, uh, we also have uh, a favorite uh, function. So uh, you have here your favorites, and you see here this uh, V-pose. Uh, and you can assign different uh, functions for the driver. So now you have activated the ambient light. When I'm doing the very same pose, I can directly access uh, the seat menu. 
So this is very flexible. You can actually assign any function, a vehicle function or a telephone number to directly start a call or a navigation destination to directly start a navigation. So this is a core feature. And beyond we have uh, light functions, uh, which unfortunately cannot be demonstrated here because they only work uh, when it's dark outside. But you can uh, do uh, a vertical up and down underneath the mirror to uh, activate your reading light, again based on passenger versus driver distinction. Um, and when the seat is not occupied and you reach out for the seat or reach out for the glove box at night, you automatically get a searchlight here on this side. So you can surely have some interesting games then, driver versus co-driver, to uh, fight for the functions of the infotainment system. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So the panoramic roof is really large, extremely large. Here we can see how we can open it and wow, the mechanism is super smooth. So it doesn't open too wide in the length, but it's actually here in the width is very wide. Really interesting. And there's also, of course, if you live in a hotter climate and still want to have it, there's a shade available that comes right there, a black shade. Still, it will be hotter than if you just pick the plain roof, that's for sure. Ta-da! It really takes ages because it, it's going all over the vehicle. So let's get in the rear. And the interesting thing is here, you can now move this, the rear bench 10 centimeters forward. There we go. Or backward. And the overall increase of legroom, if you compare it to the previous generation, increase of 7 centimeters in length. And when I sit here, this is massive. Wow. And if you compare that to the BMW X5, this is a massive advantage here in this case for the GLE. You can also, let's see, control the back part here and even the headrest electronically. Interesting, so you can more be in the, this lying back position or a little bit more upright. The only thing I feel which could not be that good on the long term run, well, the bench, you see, it leans a little bit backward, so um, that's not that good for the lower pelvis and on the other hand it increases the headroom a little bit so you still have some headroom again 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 but with the panoramic roof it always reduces the headroom a little bit so would be probably a little bit better without it um, so yeah I think that the rear seating comfort in the X5 was a little bit better but the leg room here that one is definitely better with the Geely well why can't we have it both? I don't know. <laughs> and Isofix on the outside of the seats. Then we have here some storage room. Also cup holders can flip out. There is of course a middle tunnel since this one is all-wheel drive. The standard setup is 50-50 but also with a variable all-wheel drive that the torque can be, um, you know, more front, more the back. You can put your feet here but it looks a little bit awkward. Um, you can sit here theoretically as an adult, headroom-wise, yes, but the rear here with the um, with the you know, with the armor is a little bit hard, and you also have a separate climate control here for the rear USB-C slot and a 230 volt socket, maybe for recharging your laptop. Well, and then even more interesting is also that you can also flip those seats electronically. Here we go. This is, for example, when I do it from here and then they raise up because there will also be a seven-seater version available. It's not with this very vehicle, but if you have the seven-seater, this would be the way you enter the third seating row. Of course, this will only be used, you know, for smaller people or children. I hope they think about Isofix um, in the rear then for the sixth and seventh seat. Then it would make sense. Other than that, the real seven-seater car will, of course, be the GLS, which will be basically a longer new GLE then. Then you will also be able to better use the third seating row. So, now the truck area. 825 until 2055 is the liter capacity. You can see very well usable also in the width. Check here. This is pretty interesting because you can store the floor cover here. That's nicely done. You can optionally also fit the replacement tire. And here, for example, is also available that you can split the trunk here. For example, if you have a dog or so, this is also possible. But again, you can also remove it. And we can also flip the seats from here. Oh. 
let's go, yeah, forward like this. And then you have the electric seating fold. Pretty handy that comes, of course. Oh, and then you have a fold flat area of the whole trunk. Really nice. And the good thing is, you can even raise them again just here from the rear. Ta-da! Oh, by the way, just right here, you can see this one here is to fold out the electric towing hook. Really cool. So a useful feature where you can also hide it again there. And no, not that you have an additional length all the way standard. There it is, and gone again. And let's close the hatch, electric hatch right here, see the safety. Yeah, that's way to go. That's how it's done. So Mercedes can really do that very well. It always closes and opens, but at the same time it's so safe that it won't hurt anyone. And I wanted to talk to you about the suspension next to the base suspension and the air suspension. There's the new e-active body control and by that they can control each single damper on every wheel. And so they can, for example, also make an anti-tilt control so that the car stays upright, even leans inside the corner. This is an, no, a, a bit further development of existing suspensions they had, but this one here completely new, especially for good use when you combine it, then it said it's also be combinable with the air suspension and also with the off-road package. This car will feature an off-road package, even an off-road gear reduction and a rear differential lock. And if you then also combine it with the e-active body control, there will be a function that when you're, for example, stuck off-road, like in the sand, the car can basically whip out the sand, you know, like go up and down a little bit like those, you know, uh, <laughs> special hydraulic cars that can go up and down. Pretty interesting. So totally new possibilities they give with this new suspension. And also let's talk about assistance systems because the Distronic Plus is now also available with a new traffic jam assistant that will go until 60 kilometers an hour so that you can basically relax then, also a partly autonomous function. And there's also a new function that when the car sees a traffic jam ahead, you can not only see it, you know, you can cannot see it visually yet, but maybe the map data and the traffic life information tells you the car is automatically reduced to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that's something for the German motorway if people drive 180 or something, but it's definitely a very clever feature. Now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Mercedes GLE. Well, design-wise, I have to say it is one of my favorites among the full-set SUV. What about you? Tell me your comments about that. The AMG line here, of course, sporty. I think I would more prefer it in a rather elegant way with chrome around the windows and also the plastic wheel arch to make it really off-road-ish. Mercedes also claims to have still a real off-roader with an off-road gear reduction, for example, and also this new e-active body control supposed to add more of a feature that you can basically never get stuck anywhere well of course you need the right tires for that too on the interior you see the new digitalization with those widescreen setup pretty clean and impressive the looks for sure and also still you know with the manual temperature control i liked it because we've seen that the mbux voice activation it's among the best in the market at the moment but still not everything is realized in every language. It's also a very complicated process. Also, the interior processing quality, the build quality on a very high level. With the rear bench that is movable, adds more flexibility, large trunk and a lot of legroom on the rear seats. That's special for this vehicle. However, I was not that satisfied that the rear bench was falling backwards, by basically. Then I got also the seven-seater function that will be available. And the GLS will basically, we expect the very same car, just a little bit longer and with a real usable third seating row that you can also have adults on the third seating row than in the GLS. So far there's the all new GLE and of course we're looking forward to driving it, especially with this new suspension. Let's see more about that on a later stage and looking forward to your feedback here on Autogefühl.